Today I'm going to take this opportunity to talk through some of our work pre-COVID and then some comparisons with our work to date, highlighting how, like many of you, we've had to adapt in response to the COVID pandemic. As with all of you, this has totally turned our lives around and our work and how we deliver our work. You'll be pleased to know You'll be hearing from the wider team to find out how they've adapted to the work virtually and still able to provide our vital services and more in response to the needs of the voluntary sector, communities and local people and working closer than ever with the local authority and health partners. So if we have a look at the work that we delivered pre-COVID, I'm not going to go through everything, I'm just giving you a bit of a whistle-stop tour of our service delivery. So. We've supported 101 individual organisations to support them in the development, to access funding, support with governance, finance, volunteer management and much more. In fact, we ended up delivering 324 separate interventions, so really even more than one a day. 66 of these groups also accessed our training programme, so we've delivered safeguarding, making every contact count, volunteer management, and also bespoke closed programmes to meet the needs of specific organisations. We carried out 53 reflection reviews. This is our self-assessment health check tool for organisations to work through to identify any support needs that they may have but also to show them what they're doing well and maybe promote the work that they're doing well to their trustees, etc., and the wider stakeholders and beneficiaries. Pre-COVID, we supported groups to leave in 230,831 pounds. This is predominantly made up of many smaller groups accessing funds of less than 10,000, helping them to deliver their activities and projects within the communities. We advertised 170 volunteer opportunities for the sector, helping organisations to find suitable volunteers that best meet the needs of their organisation. As you know, WVA sends out regular communications across the sector and many of the staff sit on a number of boards and forums ensuring that the sector has a strong voice, including a voice for young people through one of our projects, but also provided a platform for us to raise issues and concerns. And just as importantly, to seek out effective partnerships when opportunities may arise for the sector to get involved in. So, during COVID, what did we do? Well, we continued to support groups, but this time around their resilience and recovery supporting groups to re-emerge after the lockdown and then going back into the lockdown. We've also carried out a number of surveys around food distribution, finance and funding recovery, employment, gathering insight into the needs of our sector to help us get through this and feed this information back into um, key grant makers, stakeholders, local authority, health, etc. Within the six month period, we supported groups to lever in almost £300,000. All of this has been COVID related, helping groups to adapt their delivery and helping some of them to cover some of the losses that have been made. Ensuring the voluntary sector is still going to be at the forefront throughout the pandemic and hopefully after. The biggest thing we had to deal with was the number of people registering with us to volunteer. It was almost 900 people. I know thousands more were also volunteering in the community helping the cause, but we managed to vet and select and mobilise 438 volunteers to support with the COVID crisis, helping with deliveries, food calls, prescriptions, food, etc. We increased our communications twofold to ensure the sector and volunteers were kept up to date on local guidelines and information and, and national information that came out, but also helped to unpick um, and make sense of some of the information that came out, especially for some of our communities. We also witnessed a massive increase in our social media following. We do have a short film related to volunteering activity, which I'm going to show a bit later on. And many of you might have already seen this, but it's a good opportunity to recognise how people came together to support one another through the crisis and are continuing to do so now. A real step change has been collaborating with the local authority. From the onset, we've been engaged and involved in the delivery of the council's COVID response, developing and delivering services, providing communications, and delivering activity in a coordinated approach to support our vulnerable residents. 
really keen to see this collaborative work continue and be one of the good things that came out of the COVID work. We have started to adapt our work, keeping in contact with the hundreds of volunteers to keep the momentum going. And we know there will be a need to continue to support groups with their recovery, especially as we see an increase in people presenting with mental health issues and what seems likely to be fewer funding opportunities as COVID specific funding comes to an end. At WVA, we're keeping positive that Warrington's voluntary sector will bounce back to continue having strong communities that are vibrant, but this time even more resilient. So now I'd like to pass over so you can hear from my colleagues at WVA. Warrington Voluntary Action, a year in review. Young people were the focus of the WAVE project as they provided various levels of engagement across the town of Warrington. Secret shoppers were provided to improve the museum for younger people. The engagement with young people fed back to commissioners on mental health provision for young persons. Think tanks were established, giving over 1,000 young people a platform to engage on culture and health services across the borough, and 68 young people involved in a shoot for the moon, young people take over event. Warrington Voluntary Action played a key role in designing the public sector program for the Design Council. Opportunities to create a system for community-based prevention in the town of Warrington to enable people to live well and for longer and more independently. They were part of the update of the local compact and reciprocal work with Warrington Borough Council to provide commissioning and procurement workshops. They worked with Warrington Health Watch to establish the Warrington People's Panel give people a voice and stay on health and social care. They were part of the Central Six Master Plan and played a pivotal role to ensure community engagement and representation on the board. Warrington Voluntary Action marches on. Hello, my name is Lisa Leonard and I work for Warrington Voluntary Action um, as a volunteer engagement officer for the New Leaf Programme. Throughout COVID, I was asked to take part in the Safe and Well team, um, ringing vulnerable clients um, throughout the week, uh, which I did. I um, had quite a few refer to me over some time and would work with those and then refer them back to the council. My role was to just have a little chat with each person each day and make sure that they had plenty of food and um, they were up to date with the prescriptions. So the ranges in age were amazing. It was from um, 20 plus to 90 plus. Um, very rewarding role. Um, and I think they really, really appreciated the help that we gave them. Um, some of those people didn't speak to anybody, uh, had no family in particular and um, really, really um, look forward to that call. Um, I would make specific arrangements each day and time. And one in particular lady, she sat waiting. Um, so it was great. It made a massive difference to her well-being, mental health. Um, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure. Hi, my name is Maddie and I'm a communications and engagement support worker at WVA. My role is to maintain active engagement with volunteers, especially during lockdown when opportunities are limited. This engagement is kept through our social media pages, Facebook group and our monthly newsletter. Our monthly newsletter, launched in September 2020, goes out to over 3,000 volunteers each month, giving them the latest volunteering opportunities, updates and stories from other volunteers. This year I've been running the Well Time Project over in the east of Warrington, working closely with the GP surgeries. Birchwood, Padgate and Fernhead Medical Centre. The Welltime project was initially set up to support patients to improve their health and wellbeing by sharing their time and skills with each other. When Covid hit and we went into lockdown, I worked remotely from home, but I was still able to keep in contact with the staff and the GPs through virtual meetings. The biggest challenge this year has been supporting those most vulnerable that haven't had access to the internet. 
and those that have had access to the internet were unsure on how to connect to online services that they needed. I recruited a team of volunteers using phone and text and coordinated these volunteers to go out and about in the east of Warrington to help those that were shielded and isolating to deliver medication and food parcels out to those in need. When lockdown eased off, I set up a couple of park walks as um, well time members were quite anxious about getting out and about again in, in the community due to COVID. Um, these park walks I ran over in Wolston and Birchwood Park. Um, there was a great way to use the opportunity to teach them how to go online, do their online shopping, um, help them set up online prescriptions and I showed them how to download the Zoom app. And we now do weekly virtual Zoom meetings, um, which has been very successful. All of this has been done with an amazing team of volunteers that I've had to support me and help me out along the way this year. It has been a challenging year this year, which has shown the importance of the Well Time Project over in the east of Warrington and hope to continue to support those vulnerable and in need. Hi there, I'm James, a group development. Hi, my name's Helen and I've been supporting small groups across Warrington this year. So the virtual services that uh, I've been involved in pretty much since August have been this new COVID-19 review and reflect. Um, it's been a really challenging time for those groups. Um, so many of them unable to get together um, physically, unable to do the things that they normally do um, that really have a big positive impact on their mental health, on feelings of loneliness and social isolation. Um, we've also changed our review and reflect tool slightly to help those groups to plan for the future. So to think about what arrangements might need to be in place for when they can get together again. Uh, and this online survey really encouraged groups to assess what they do and they get ready to restart again, to meet in person if they haven't been doing, encouraging them as a, as a group really to assess um, what they do and how they best deliver for that group and for those people that are involved in that group. And also to think about any funding that might be needed. So some groups have continued to apply for funding over the last few months, which is really great. And other groups are now planning for um, how best to search for funding and to find funding and to apply for that funding ready for when they re-meet and do get back together again. Difficult because the challenge has been about resilience. And I think a lot of groups have used this to think about how can we get back to restart um, and that might mean that we do things differently but that's what we've been here for to really kind of help groups answer those difficult questions. So we've been doing what we can to help those groups to keep together um, so a lot of groups have been able to um, speak to each other over the phone or digitally by Zoom which has been really good. A few have been able to meet physically. Um, some groups have um, decided to meet individually, so go on socially distance walks. Um, so we've been supporting those groups to think about those different ways in which they could continue to keep in touch with each other. I'm Alice, the Volunteer Development Officer. I've currently been working on engaging volunteers, old and new, for one-off events and some more regular opportunities as well. A lot of things are on hold at the moment, but it's good to look towards the future to see what would be available. I've started a virtual volunteer network, an opportunity for organisations to share ideas on adaptations they've made to volunteering during this year and see where the future will take us as well. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of challenges that have been faced and also many that are yet to come so hopefully this network will prove useful and grow throughout my time at Warrington Voluntary Action. Uh, in the new year I'm hoping to organise a virtual volunteer fair to encourage more people to get involved in volunteering and I hope to engage more young people uh, as a new generation of volunteers. Now to a new feature in the breaking news program, a slot we call Infrastructure Today, featuring awesome news about things that are happening around the country. Warrington Voluntary Action are continuing their excellence as they launch new updates and concepts. The infrastructure organisation has developed some ideas to continue to support 
the people of Warrington. They've updated their website, making it compatible with a number of platforms and devices and accessible software. They continue their work in partnership with local public sector organisations and WVA are part of the work focusing on frailty and better ageing. They're using their communications expertise and are supporting messages around the Rugby League World Cup and creating a campaign for the active Warrington strategy called Be Match Fit. They're involved in assessing and administering and of course developing a quality assurance mark for the local mental health partnership called EQUIS or Ensuring Quality Independent Services. And recent funding has allowed them to access some tablet computers which will support residents to connect to organisations, family, stay well and access multiple virtual services across Warrington. They've formed a partnership with other Cheshire-based infrastructure organisations called Cheshire and Warrington Infrastructure Partnership, or QUIP, to create a strong voice within sub-regional projects, partnerships and boards. And, oh, I'm sorry, and, and this, just in, uh, a new scheme comes to town in the form of the Good Neighbour Project, which aims to help people across Warrington remain independent in their homes and communities by enabling them to do as much for themselves as possible with the support of some volunteers. The 12-month project focuses on people who would benefit from low-level support or befriending due to social isolation, social anxiety and those who are pre-crisis and pre-frailty. And finally, they launched their new e-learning platform in early 2021. The first course we believe will be safeguarding and it will be free to all staff and volunteers of Warrington organisations. More information to follow. Warrington Voluntary Action want to say a big thank you to the Cheshire Community Foundation and the National Lottery Community Fund for supporting them with funding this year. And that's all the headlines for the moment. The next bulletin will come later. Have a good evening. <laughs>